How does a PD measurement setup look like? Well, there are different versions of that, but let's talk about the easiest one and something very similar like this can be found in the IEC 6270. So let's look at this. First of all, we have a voltage source and the voltage source should be a high voltage source because we're testing partial discharges with high voltages. We usually test them with nominal voltage, you're not, and as many standards demand, usually a little bit higher. So example given uh, the voltage for testing is, for example, 1.73 U0 or 2 times U0 or even higher. Um, for example, for cables, um, we have uh, transformers that they sometimes even demand to go to different voltage levels. Oh, by the way, for cables, it's uh, high voltage cables, it's the same thing. And uh, therefore, we need a regulating or a transformer that we can regulate. So the transformer usually gets um, something between 110 or 400 volts. Right, and um, the transformer itself would be able to transmit noise coming from the energy network, um, or the transformer itself could have partial discharges itself. So therefore, it's a very clever idea to uh, put a blocking impedance in there. This is demanded by the IEC 6270 at least, and the blocking impedance job is mostly to make sure that there's not so many noise coming from the transformer. There are other tasks as well, but the most important one is no noise. A blocking impedance usually works uh, with a factor of 3, 5, 10, sometimes 50, sometimes 20, meaning if noise comes in, it's going to be diminished by the factor of, let's say, 10, you know, three, something between 3 and 20. And now we have our device under test. Device under test. And the device under test is, um, as a simplification, viewed as a capacitance only. Because actually, what we are trying to measure is the insulation between our high voltage conductor and our ground. So that's like a capacitance, right? There are many other things in our high voltage device that we are measuring. No question about that. There's always come some kind of resistance. There's always some kinds of impedance. But we are focusing on the capacitance only for the time being. So it is displayed as a capacitance. Now, we have our measuring instrument over there. And um, there could be analog, there could be digital. Nowadays, they're usually digital. So if you want to connect a measurement instrument to high voltage, you have to do something about it because the majority of analog digital converters, they only work, I don't know, up to 60 volts or 100 volts, or 120, usually not in the KV range. So we need some kind of a connection device. This connection device could be a capacitive divider. And um, here, it is displayed over here. This would be a capacitance with C, very often abbreviated as CC or sometimes CK, at least in the German version. And this stands for coupling capacitor. And the coupling capacitor very often is um, a capacitor that you buy from somewhere. And uh, it is not uncommon to have a coupling capacitor of about one nanofarad. They can be bigger, they can be smaller, but one nanofarad is a pretty common value. And now here you have a measuring impedance. Some uh, companies call it a quadrupole. And this quadrupole is technically um, a capacitance as well. And it creates the capacitive divider between the high voltage coupling capacitor. And this would be our low voltage capacitor. And now I drew a small resistor in here because my idea was, well, we are getting, um, we're getting two signals, right? We're getting uh, the, the, the charge signal, we're getting the, uh, the, uh, the partial discharge. And furthermore, we're getting uh, the voltage information. We have a connection cable to our measuring instrument. And as I said, these things are kept rather easy and simple. So that's pretty much it. However, there's a possibility that you can change this up. So right here, I was drawing the capacitance of our test object rather large, right? This one is a little bit smaller. However, there's a possibility to exchange these two. So what we have here is we are going to put our coupling capacitor over here. We're going to put our device under test here. So this would be our coupling capacitor now, and this would be our device under test. Doing something like this is actually has a pretty big uh, advantage because you, your testing or your measurement will be more sensitive, meaning you're getting better results. However, it bears um, an unpracticality and a risk. 
So let's talk about the unpracticality first. If you have a known coupling capacitor, for example, 100, uh, one nanofarad, right? So if your measurement impedance or your quadrupole, let's say, has one microfarad, very roughly you had, in the old thing, you had a divider which was 1000 to 1. Meaning, you have 1 kV here, you have about 1 volt here. You have 100 kV here, you have uh, 100 uh, volts over there. If you have the device under test over here, now you have the unpracticality that maybe your capacitance changes every single time. So let's say I'm a manufacturer for cables. If I have a longer cable, I have a higher capacitance. If I have a, have a medium voltage cable, um, after a high voltage cable, the medium voltage cable usually has, if it's same length, a higher capacitance. If I'm a manufacturer for um, uh, voltage transformers, for example, if I have different types, they usually have different capacitances. So every time I have to figure out what is my divider factor, and I have to figure out is the divider factor here good enough for my measurement instrument to be, uh, to be able to still um, have the analog digital converter taking the signal from an analog state to a digital state, or am I overdriving the analog digital converter or the amplifier in front. So this would be the unpracticality. The risk here is that, I mean, if I do partial discharge testing, there's always a risk, if I'm putting high voltage on there, that I'm having a flashover. Could be an internal flashover, could be an external flashover, whatever. So if I have a flashover here, which I don't want, but if I have a flashover here, at this very moment, this point, and this point have the same voltage level, right? Meaning, at this point over here, I'm having high voltage now. So now my measurement impedance sees a high voltage. That would probably cause uh, the, the, blocking impe uh, the, the measurement impedance um, to start smoking and uh, just be a, be a burned piece of electronic equipment afterwards. The risk is that your measurement instrument might see some kind of this high voltage values as well and that could literally endanger the, uh, the user. So there are many companies who are building in, uh, some kind of protection circuits into the, um, into the um, measurement impedance in order to keep us safe and at least not to risk uh, the measurement equipment and the user. This being said, putting a device under test right over here and having this in the, in the grounding path of the device under test bears the risk of having a flash over and damaging measurement equipment. So, that's pretty much it. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next videos.